We're almost there. We can make it. We can make it. So Hellraiser Revelations tells the story of two dim-witted college students that unwittingly unleash Pinhead and the Cenobites. Well, we're here, everybody. Hellraiser Revelations, the most maligned, despised, and hated entry in this franchise, from what I can tell. Seems to be almost a universal answer that this is the bottom of this franchise, which has not seen the top in quite a long time. And I've never seen this movie before. This is another first-time watch. This is the last first time watch on this review series. I have indeed seen Judgment once before, so I'm curious how that rewatch is gonna go. But I walked into this one very curious because for as bad, as rough, and as hard to get through as most of this franchise has been, I was fascinated with what could have went wrong with this movie to the point that Hellraiser and horror fans alike will shit on this movie before any of the other sequels. Let me get into my positives of Hellraiser Revelations, of which I have a lot more than I would have thought I would walking into this. First and foremost, this has the most Hellraiser-centric story since the original film. Now we'll talk about execution because there's certainly a lot of huge missteps along the way, but as far as a concept, as far as their initial idea, as far as the themes and the visuals and the story storyline that they are taking us along with, with these characters, this feels the most appropriate as a Hellraiser movie than any movie that I have seen since the second one. You have these two dickhead, asshole, immature college students that are off in Mexico, living a debaucherous life, fucking and drinking and smoking and having a merry old time until the bigger asshole of the two decides that he wants to experience the wide spectrum of pain and pleasure, opens up the lament configuration, and unleashes Pinhead upon him and his friend. And that's how the movie starts. And I got scared for a second because the movie opens up with video footage of this scene happening. And it was all in this kind of shaky cam, handheld found footage style. And I sunk in my chair and went, oh my God, no. A found footage Hellraiser movie? But luckily that's just a couple of scenes in this movie where they're finding this little video camera and they're finding what happened to a brother and a boyfriend respectively. Now, beyond that, you have these two families that are brought together like a year later because the two guys from that opening scene are part of their family and they bond over this hole in their life. And the rest of the movie is essentially like a slow building siege movie on their house and the Cenobites are that Sam Peckinpah looming threat. Uh, not a comparison of quality by bringing that name out, but just the type of movie they're going for is one setting and the Cenobites are slowly, slowly making their way to this house. And eventually it's revealed that the main douchebag that opened up the Lament configuration is trying to reanimate himself throughout these flashbacks, just like Frank and just like Julia in the first two movies. And he's got the same muscular tissue look where he's wearing a hood and he's trying to get skin by the end of it. And eventually when the Cenobites are actually released upon this family in the third act, it's very true to form of what Pinhead and the Cenobites always were intended to be, which is these enactment of pain and pleasure. If you bring us upon you, we are going to make you experience the wide array of pain and pleasure one way or another, and that is the only thing that we are here to do. So again, execution aside, we will discuss it. That as a story concept to me feels like a damn good idea for a Hellraiser sequel. And even just at its heart, taking away all of the Hellraiser classic elements that they bring into this, just that siege movie approach of these people stuck in this house with the lament configuration and things are happening that's making this looming threat feel closer throughout the movie, I thought that was another interesting little angle to take for a Hellraiser movie. Even if they didn't have all of those elements and it was just a siege movie with Pinhead, that would have been interesting. You know, we've already been through the CD detective shit. We've seen what they did with Hellworld with this kind of modern 2000s meta approach. That would have been an okay idea for a Hellraiser sequel in and of itself as well. A lot of the gore effects are pretty damn good here. Not really much CGI to bitch about or to see like in the past handful of these movies. It's practical effects, it's practical gore. The makeup effects on a few of the Cenobites aren't the best, but I think that the gore itself as far as the kills, as far as showing the characters without skin and that muscular state 
State was pretty damn good. There's some kills in the final 10 minutes that are pretty good. There's a woman that has chains come and opens her fucking throat up like a that dinosaur on Jurassic Park <laughs> that actually looked pretty cool. <laughs> And finally, though they could have been executed slightly better, there's a couple of twist reveals and turns plot-wise in the final 10-15 minutes of this movie that I actually thought worked out pretty damn good. Having the more innocent person come back early on in this movie, the one of the two missing guys, and having the, the douchebag evil one kind of feel like he's going to show up at the house at some point just to reveal that... He's been there this whole time wearing that guy's skin. That actually caught me by surprise. I thought that that was a pretty good little twist to have there for a final act little showdown, if you will. And the final, final twist regarding that jackass that somehow survived a fucking... We'll, we'll talk about that. The guy that shoots the antagonist of the movie nobody's gonna kill you but me you son of a bitch and then just shoots him having that whole sequence of events play out with pinhead saying like all right you dumbass now i'm just gonna take all of your innocent family members because i have a bounty of flesh and i expect payment like that was kind of another cool little twist to where you leave in a very dark bleak fucked up note that feels at home for a hellraiser movie you're trying to do the right thing but unfortunately the cenobites were already unleashed upon you and your act of vengeance just before you bleed out has now caused more pain and more suffering to the innocent members of your family and now we're going to leave you wondering and knowing that and regretting that for the rest of your five minutes of life pretty fucked up pretty effective now moving on to the negatives and again just like with hellraiser hellworld even though i am spending a good amount of time defending certain redeemable qualities of this movie this movie sucks <laughs> this is a very very bad movie. This is a movie that I do not necessarily have the desire to ever watch again, but I do feel like there's more positive than some of you guys have given it credit for. Now to get onto the part of the review that we actually agree on. The acting and especially the script and the lines that these people are given is some of the worst that I have ever seen. Well, I have watched the Wrong Turn movies, I have watched the Leprechaun movies, I have watched the Saw movies, and reviewed all of those within the past year. And I am here to tell you the acting in Hellraiser Revelations is the worst acting that I have seen in a very, very long time. And it's all different spectrums of bad. There's people that just feel like they are absolutely lifeless, like they have no idea what acting even is, and they're just there to read lines off of cue cards, like the director's holding it up behind the camera. There's other people that are going so off the charts, chewing the scenery, that it's just, it's not even just unbelievable, it's embarrassing, and it's like, dude, this is a fucking cartoon at this point with the way that you're giving this character to us. And then there's other characters that just feel like bad daytime soap opera to where the way that they react with each other and the way that they kind of turn and try to give some emotional moments is just like, what the fuck is this? Because I hate this shithole. We simply had to get the fuck out of this bullshit generica. He didn't want to come back. He wanted to stay. I don't know why you're <laughs> spilling tears Father dear is there when your true love lies bleeding to death. I mean, even just the way that the director handles the scenes regarding these characters. There is a part where a guy gets shot point fucking blank with the shotgun. And somehow doesn't die, but he lays on the couch and he's like, ugh, and he's got this little bloody patch on his shirt. And there's like a good five seconds where they go out to this wide establishing shot and show where all the characters are in this room after this dude's been shot and nobody's reacting to it. There's literally his wife and a, a loved one on the other side of the room is sitting on a chair that's just like. The production value of this movie is absolutely abysmal. If you look into the production of this film, it was quite literally rushed into inception because they wanted to hold on to the rights they had to make this movie just to not lapse on owning the rights so within weeks they threw the script together got everybody together and went off and shot this thing and you can tell that they could not muster up a whole lot of budget to do this i mean for the fact that the whole movie takes place basically in one house with aside from one or two other small locations in the flashbacks and the couple of shots that we get in hell or in the cenobite dimension but for the most part it's all one place 
but even the production design on a lot of the makeup effects with the Cenobites, namely Pinhead. I've seen pictures and video of people doing cosplay at horror cons that look way more convincing than anything that we see here. And it's almost to the point where I don't understand why they didn't use shadows and lighting more to hide that. They fully light up and fully display this makeup work that they were apparently so proud of and they should not have been. And now talking about the biggest detriment to this movie, and that is this dollar store pinhead that we get here. This was the first film that Doug Bradley did not return to play the role of Pinhead. Part of that's due to the rush production. Part of that I would like to think is he was just tired of being in shit movies and tired of playing that character to a, just an agonizing degree. And part of it's probably because he looked at the script and said, fuck no, get somebody else to do this. So they get this guy to come in and he... I don't completely blame him. I, I mean, to be honest with you guys, it doesn't matter. You could have Daniel Day-Lewis in this fucking role, and he's basically walking into a firing squad trying to take over an iconic role from Doug Bradley. So he does what he can with this role. I don't think the script does him any favors. I don't think the makeup quality does him any favors. He doesn't necessarily have the right shape for Pinhead. He's got a very round face, and when he's all cleaned up and it's all skin, he's got the eyebrows and you know, any facial hair, anything taken off of him, he looks almost baby-faced, so it just, it doesn't have any intimidation whatsoever. This Pinhead instantly became a meme, and that's where he will live for the entirety of his legacy but I don't completely think that's the actor's fault. I actually think one of the biggest missteps that they have with this that could have made him a lot more effective is they chose for some stupid fucking reason to not modulate his voice whatsoever. No. Nico! You opened it, summoned us. Pinhead has always been like Candyman, where he has this echo and this vibrato to his voice and this deepened tone that always kind of accentuates these crazy ass dark lines that he has given. And when you take that away, it's just laughable. I mean, you have this guy to where he's giving pinhead style lines, but he's just trying to do like a Doug Bradley impersonation. And without, without the modulation and the effects on his voice, it's fucking embarrassing. This trinket of sensation movie now will be a delight compared to the onslaught of agony that awaits at our hands. And it's such an easy effect. That's why I don't understand why the hell they didn't do it. I'll demonstrate it for you right now. I'm gonna give you two pin headlines. One of them, me trying to sound like Doug Bradley, and one of them with modulation effects. You ready? Here we go. There is a bounty of flesh, and we expect payment. There is a bounty of flesh, and we expect payment. Do you hear the difference? Do you hear how simple of a change that that is? Why, why anybody that put the time and the effort that they did into the gore effects would not put even five minutes into vocalizing Pinhead in a different manner than they did in this film? One of the most incompetent things that I have seen in this entire franchise. And while I'm talking about Pinhead, I will take one additional shot at this movie because I thought this was another missed opportunity. So you have this whole reveal after it's shown that the douchebag character has actually come back in the skin of the more innocent of the two college kids. It's revealed that the innocent guy has been the one being turned into a Cenobite the entire movie and he comes to his family fully in Cenobite form as like a mini Pinhead. Why? What the fuck? Why, why Pinhead? Why would you make him look exactly like Pinhead? Why would Pinhead make him look exactly like Pinhead? What a missed opportunity. I mean, one of the cooler elements uh, for Hellraiser fans to look forward to in some of these sequels is what creativity is that filmmaker going to bring to the Cenobites? What new creepy design are they gonna bring? And Bloodline was kind of the last movie to do that with the, the two guys that are morphed together with that little spinning module thing. But this movie had an opportunity to make a cool looking Cenobite for that character and instead they just made him a generic version of the generic Pinhead. And it's like, what the fuck? Why? Explain that to me, why? I'll, st I'll sit here and listen, why? Why? So all in all guys, I'm not gonna recommend you watch this for sure, don't get that nervous. I was not gonna turn around and say this is one of the best Hellraiser movies because no. But for a movie that from my perspective has been endlessly shit on and everybody says is worthless and garbage and I even had a comment saying it's a movie that should be wiped from the face of this earth, I think there's a lot more redeeming qualities in what they were trying to do with the sequel. 
all of the failure is in execution on this one. So it's definitely near the bottom of this franchise, but I would be lying to you if I said that this was the one I had the hardest time getting through. So if you're enjoying the Hellraiser franchise and you've made it this far, I would say give it a shot. You might find more redeeming about it than you expected. But if you're not liking this franchise, if you've never watched any of these movies, or if you're just sick to death of seeing Hellraiser films, there's no reason to continue on to the ninth installment. So for the vast majority of you out there, go ahead and skip it. So what do you guys think of Hellraiser Revelations? Are you one of the people that said this is the worst thing ever to come out of this franchise? Or you like me and actually think that there's some redeeming qualities here. It's just a shame that they executed it like garbage. Let me know your thoughts down below. And we've got one movie to go, Hellraiser Judgment. That review is dropping tomorrow. And then Saturday, you will get the full ranking of this franchise, which after this review might be a little controversial. We'll find out. So be sure to hit that subscribe button after you like and share this video so that you do not miss any of that fun if you're a Hellraiser fanatic. And we got a couple more franchises we're going to get through in the month of November that should be a lot of fun, so do not miss any of that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be. It has more jump cuts than